Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This video is part two of the flex arm series. In this video, I'm going to walk through my flex arm. I'm going to show you it all assembled, uh, go through some of the main features, talk about the different um, options that I got with it. And then uh, I'm going to do a side by side comparison against it tapping and against my bridge port. And the subject of the experiment will be these guys right here. I have a bunch of these that I made, and this is this is one of the this is one of the jobs that came to mind when I first put my hands on it. I thought to myself, oh, these little tapping, these uh, little tool blocks that I make would be perfect for the flex arm. So you could see across the top there, there's three tapped holes. So we're going to pit this part against, uh, we're going to pit the bridge port against the flex arm and see uh, just who comes out the victor. So let's take a look and we'll get started. All right, starting at the top, you know, we have our air feed hose that comes down into this little manifold here. Uh, connected in is the reversing switch. Um, I opted and I got the depth gauge. This is a, a depth stop, I should say. Uh, when you hit a certain depth, this tube will move up and down. There's a handle on the other side. And once you, you know, once the depth is hit, it trips this button, which automatically sends it into a reverse motion. So this is your pneumatic spindle. Uh, here's where your tap holders are. All these parts on the, uh, you know, on the, the knuckle here that holds this, or I should say it's like a gimbal, it holds it perfectly vertical in any, op in any position that you put it in. All this stuff is all made in-house on their CNC's, in the machine shop. I'm not sure exactly who makes the spindles themselves. They might be a third party, um, but the rest of the, the, rest of the flex arm and, and all the parts are all made in-house. And from what I understand, they try to source locally too, um, from places obviously located in Ohio, wherever applicable. Um, but this is all, you know, all made in-house. Over here is a sliding counterweight. So, you know, obviously if you put it here, it's, it's gonna send it down and, you know, you could balance it out and it just locks with this little, this little handle right here. Removing a tap holder is very easy. We just lift up and it comes right out. If you want to take a tap out, it's just as easy. You press in on this little center ring here, spring loaded, press in, pull your tap out. Installation, push it right in, it's locked. So this pivoting part of the, the lower pivoting part of the arm here, this is all a rough casting that they have uh, done locally, I believe, someplace in Ohio. I'm not sure of the company name, but you know, then they machine it out and then powder coat it. Um, all the parts, like I said, all, all done in-house, all machined in-house, really great operation, but super smooth, real, real, real silky smooth. There's no play, there's no flex, there, <laughs> and there's no flex, right? Everything is rock solid, yet silky smooth. Now I installed my Kurt Vice all the way on this end of the cart because the flex arm itself is mounted all the way on that end of the cart and it's, you know, it has this hinged arm and it moves, you know, forward and backwards and side to side. And I found that it's really easy to, uh, to span the width of the Kurt Vice's jaws this way. You can move from hole to hole to hole quite easily. So that's, that's why I put mine here. But obviously your setups will differ uh, according to your usage but this is how I set up mine. The card is extremely well made. It's 3 16 welded up steel. It's got the uh, water jet of the logo, flex arm. It's got a little tray around the whole entire cart, handle to move it obviously. Um, and we have a 5 8 thick steel Blanchard ground top. It's got all these tapped holes so you can move your Kurt Vice, you can locate it anywhere you need to go and any other fixturing. I got uh, the tap holder rack with mine where I hold all my various tap holders. Um, this one is a Jacob's Chuck which you could put a countersink in and you could countersink lots of parts. Really, really neat feature to have in this flex arm. All right, what do you say we put this to the test? We're gonna hook up some air and I'm gonna compare tapping some aluminum blocks compared to the old way that I would do it on my milling machine. So let's, uh, let's jump right into it. Can I 
get a little bit of tapping fluid. And here we go. So, well, let's start. Move to the next hole, which is 625. Now I'm maintaining sight and I'm watching until it gets almost to the thing. And then we come back out. Move the table to one inch 025. One piece. All right, guys, well, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as you can see, the flex arm made a great uh, contribution to the shop here. I highly recommend you picking one up. It will definitely be featured in more videos to come. Um, so until that time, I, I thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.